Well, it was actually a book that I'd read just on my own, and I fell in love with it. And um, During the summers, I always read uh, teen fiction, just trying to find things to recommend to my students because, to me, that's the hardest part about figuring out if you're a reader or not is finding things that you like. And when I read it, I just I kept seeing all these teachable moments in it with uh, Suzanne Collins' writing um, with flashbacks and, and foreshadowing and suspense and uh, she's just such a wonderful writer. I just knew that if I could uh, get permission to teach it, that I I could really hook them into a good book. And um, I spoke with my principal about it, and we have a committee at our school that um, we have to go through that approves the books. And um, I kind of had to wait a few weeks for it to go through the process of being approved. And um, it was put through, and so I was allowed to teach it. And um, my very first time teaching it was, was not even a year after it had been published, so the kids knew nothing about it when I presented it to them. And I only had enough money to buy one class set of 30 books, and they were um, not sneaking out of class, but they were finding reasons to come to my room to read a few more chapters. <laughs> <laughs> it was exciting. It was very exciting to see them excited, especially after part one. They couldn't stop. They all went and bought their own copy, and I had parents emailing me asking for the author's name so they could buy their, their child uh, a copy of the book. So after that first year, I knew that um, this was a book that I needed to keep teaching, and, and we've just added new things every year, and, and Gary Ross was uh, kind of the icing on the cake this year. So it was really cool. Well, you do, you do realize you know, we say that it's in a lot of classrooms, but you're really one of the pioneers of this movement, I guess, mm-hmm. bringing Hunger Games. I, I don't know if, if people look at you this way, but you're you're kind of the Katniss of Hunger Games education. <laughs> uh, well, that's funny because I dress like her when I introduced the novel, so <laughs> I wish. That'd be nice. <laughs> what, 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 did you, what did you dress like? Did you have the reaping outfit, or, or uh, were you smoking fire um, behind you with we, oh, I wish I could recreate the fire outfit. Um, what's funny is my mother sews, and um, I presented her with the idea, and I made her read the book too, and, and she flew through it as well. So she was very excited when I told her I wanted to dress like Katniss uh, my second year to introduce the book. And after we read the, the training sequences um, at the uh, before they're before they're introduced into the arena, you know, the week before during training. Um, I figured that would be the the easiest outfit to replicate. So she made me um, a maroon colored tunic, and I wore black leggings with my UGG boots and found a a really itchy uh, Halloween long black wig that I braided and uh, a bow and arrow and introduced the book that way. Um, At first, I had several kids who hadn't read the book asking if I was Pocahontas, so... um, (laughs) It was fun. It was really fun. I think I embarrassed my husband that day when I was trying to leave to go to school. He just He's used to it. He rolls his eyes and, and lets me go. So um, we had a lot of fun with it. And uh, this year, um, my, my co-teacher, uh, who also teaches eighth grade reading, she dressed with me. So we had two Katnesses in the building for our, our spirit twin day that student council sponsored. We dressed like twin Katnesses. So um, we've had a lot of fun with it. That's wonderful. Now, you have two students who are on the line here as well, right? So let's make sure they get a chance to talk about uh, the experience they had. Yeah, maybe they Uh, can tell us a bit about why you decided to have them write letters to Gary Ross and and maybe what the letters were all about. Um, Well, I think the initial um, idea for the assignment actually came from when I was teaching the Outsiders and we watch a making of the film of The Outsiders. And um, Francis Ford Coppola is the director of The Outsiders, and he states in the the documentary of the making of the movie that the only reason he made this movie was because a group of eighth graders in Fresno, California, sent him a petition to read this book and turn this book into a movie. And um, I subscribed to Entertainment Weekly, and I can't remember the columnist's name who wrote the initial open letter to Gary Ross. I don't know if you all ever read that. Um, But he wrote an open letter to Gary Ross in Entertainment Weekly where he just went through all kinds of things he wanted Gary Ross to make sure that he did 
to to keep this movie um, true to the book and true to uh, Suzanne Collins' message. And so um, that's what I told the kids. I was like, you know, right now you, you kind of have the power to influence Gary Ross. You need to let him know um, what needs to be in this movie, that when you're in that movie theater chair, when that movie releases, that when you leave the theater, you won't be disappointed. And so um, they can tell you from there what they put in there. So Samantha and Jacob, speak up. Hi. There's Samantha. Tell us what Hi, you put Samantha. In your- do you want to go first and just quickly uh, share your thoughts? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so okay. what did you actually say in your letter, your personal letter to Gary Ross? In my letter, I wrote about Rue's death and how I don't want it to be the Hollywood typical death. I want it to be portrayed like it is in the book. Like, not totally gory in details and all that, but how it actually happened. That was the main part of that letter. I think that's great. And it's wonderful. I think a lot of people feel the same way. At 13 yeah. or 14, to be so caught up with authenticity is, is wonderful. Uh, who is the other student that we have on there? There's Samantha and... And Jacob. And Jacob. <laughs> Jacob. 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 Yeah. Jacob, you have to help me out because I'm the only guy here among all these women. So you've got to stand for me. Why, why did you like the Hunger Games like I did? Have, have we lost Jacob? On the line there? Um, we may have lost him. We may have lost Jake. See, apparently it's not very popular to be a guy who likes Hunger Games to the point where... Oh, I, I beg to differ on that. <laughs> I think okay, I well, think this book good. is uh, definitely popular with, with the boys. So you're not alone, <laughs> that's for sure. It's good to know, although it's, I'm not really complaining about these ratios. It's just sometimes, you know, I, I feel very alone uh, in this universe. Well, um, yeah, Savannah, is there, is there anything else? I mean, where can um, Well, I guess find... if Jacob comes back, you know, maybe we could talk to him. But um, So I know that Gary Ross actually received your letters, and you found yeah. out about it in not a very traditional way. No, um, it was... It was really kind of surreal. I had to kind of pinch myself. Um, I had a message from my sec- from uh, our principal secretary, and um, it was just written on the usual pink secretary uh, message form, uh, Entertainment Weekly, Karen Valby wants to talk to you about Hunger Games letters. And that was it. Like, there was no big hurrah about it. <laughs> I had to look at it twice. And when I <laughs> called her, um she was, and, and really, if you look at the Entertainment Weekly website, she she is a columnist who writes frequently about the Hunger Games, so she's a very big fan. And um, uh, she just let me know that she just uh, finished writing an article in which she'd interviewed Gary Ross, and he had uh, raved about some letters he'd received from our class, and she wanted to know more about them, and that uh, he just uh, couldn't stop talking about them and he thought they were very well written, and she just wanted to let me know that in uh, the upcoming issue that was to be published that next Friday that we would be in it, and I needed to to make sure I go grab a copy, and she would send us copies, but she just wanted to congratulate us and and to let us know that our voices had been heard. So um, I think I freaked out for a good uh, hour and and squealed to every class that I had, and... um, we were all very excited, and um, our school put out a press release that we were going to be in the Entertainment Weekly of the week of, of the next week. And um, our local Fox News channel came and did a story on us. And um, the the reporter was actually um, able to get a hold of Gary Ross. And in our interview, um, he has the phone conversation with Gary Ross uh, in our interview, and. Um, we actually get to hear Gary Ross say that he thought our letters were um, well-written and very insightful, and he really did hope he could come to our school, and they ask me every day. So, Gary Ross, if you're listening, um, the eighth graders really do want you to come. 